Hello. Martin King. It's what day is it? Thursday. I almost just said Tuesday. <laughs> I don't I don't know what world I'm living in. <sighs> Welcome back. Happy you're here. Uh, if you didn't catch Monday, we are doing standing desk live streams now, baby, because your girl's a fitness queen. Your girl's a fitness queen. Um, oh, don't look at that. Don't look at this. I, this fingernail always falls off. Just pretend you don't see it today. I don't have anything else to say. Just, just having fun. Just reading all your, your little comments. Good morning. Welcome to the live stream. I'm happy you're here. Uh, if you're new here, I'm Lija. I'm a lawyer and I'm on a mission to demystify the law and how it affects your everyday life. And I do it here on the live stream when we talk about news and current events uh, for fun. We talk shit about America. That's what we do here. Hold on. I'm going to move this all up. Just It's pretty good, right? Standing desk. Standing desk. I'm living in the lap of luxury, people. All right. All right. You know what? Everyone focus. Um, I forgot to share my screen. Let me do that right now. <sighs> Bada bing. Burning down the house. A. A. Burning down the house. A. A. Okay. Um, I don't have sound for this. You don't, you really don't need to hear anything, but um, just, you can just watch this video. Talk. This is just like some of the chaos that's been going down in Congress these last few days, okay? So Republicans in the House are trying to elect a speaker to replace Nancy Pelosi because she's, you know, Democrats, Republicans run the show now, though, as we're seeing, not very well. They're not doing it very well. Uh, okay, so traditionally, Kevin McCarthy, oh, there's that guy. What's that guy's name? Santos, the liar that we talked about last week or last Monday. Anyway, um, Kevin McCarthy traditionally would be the easy choice. He's got seniority. He was like he was assumed to be the next speaker. So assumed that uh, he moved into the speaker's office on Monday, moved a bunch of boxes in. And uh, he's just been sitting there for a while. Matt Gates wrote a letter to the like congressional architectures or something being like, is he technically a squatter? Like how long look a, a barrel of pizzas? How long does he have to be sitting to be considered a squat? It was a troll move by a, a King troll, but funny, unfortunately. Um, so traditionally Kevin McCarthy would be an easy choice, but there's a faction of Republicans who keep blocking him. The 118th Congress was supposed to be sworn in on Monday or on Tuesday after after what is typically supposed to be a procedural vote, this picking of the speaker, because it's usually a pretty obvious choice. Uh, but now it's Thursday and Congress can't get sworn in until it picks a speaker. And so we were we are without a functioning House of Representatives in this country. That is the state of things. They are reconvening at noon today. They held six votes so far. All of them have failed. They're holding their seventh vote at noon today. Old Kev needs 218 votes to win. So far, he hasn't gotten more than 203. And while it does suck that our government has so much infighting that it literally cannot function, it is nice to see some deep divides in the Republican Party. You love to see it. You love to see it. And I heard someone talking on the radio this morning, making the point that, first of all, we're not really sure how Kevin McCarthy went, got this far without having secured the votes. And it's a bad look. Biden himself said, and I quote, it's a bad look. It's a bad look that the that the wannabe Speaker of the House 
can't get votes. That's kind of the, the speaker's job. And he can't even get enough votes to get himself in to the speakership. Okay. Um, and some political pundits are saying it doesn't look good for him at this point. It doesn't look good for him. Meaning he might not get it. And there aren't any real names being offered up as an alternative. So who the hell knows how long this is going to go on for? Who the hell knows? Let me read your, let me read your comments. Biden is getting hip with the youths. Getting hip with the youths. Yeah, love to see it for the pettiest reasons, showing that the American people, showing the American people how ridiculous this party has become. Uh, yeah, they can't even reach work with members of their own party. They're just, they're not showing great leadership at this moment. We can say that. The house is up for sale and no one wants to buy it. Uh, do they still get paid? I don't know. Probably. Lord. Lord. It. Hot Mess Express is right. All right. Moira, Speaker of the House. She'd have to be a Republican to be Speaker, though, and that would be a shame on the family name. So I can't have it. I can't have it. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. We talked about this on Monday. We're going to talk about it again. There have been a couple updates. Uh, the New York Times reported that records apparently show that the man accused of killing those four university students in Idaho, you know, the ones he got a new, he got new license plates for his car five days after the murders happened, which could be a coincidence. It could be a coincidence. We simply don't know. Could be a bad, bad coincidence. Okay. Okay. We talked about this last Monday, but like, we don't know what the police know. And as much as I don't like trusting cops, they are the ones doing the investigation and being internet sleuths during an ongoing active investigation, oftentimes not really helpful, not a helpful position to, to be in because we don't have all the facts. The police probably don't even have all the facts. And I, for one, believe in a justice system where people are innocent until proven guilty. Okay. That being said, it doesn't look good. That coincidence doesn't look good. However, the police had originally said that the car seen at the crime, the car that was seen at the crime was a Hyundai Elantra from 2011 to 2013. But Brian Koberger, the suspect, his car is a 2015. Doesn't look good. Uh, but it's not the, exactly what the police were looking for. So just I'm just pointing out some inconsistencies just because I don't want anyone to say, well, he's guilty because uh, that's not how our justice system works. Um, another development that was discovered is that two weeks before Mr. Koberger was arrested, the police pulled him over twice in Idaho in a 10 minute stretch for tailgating. However, there's no indication that the cops knew anything about his potential connection to the killings. But he was pulled over twice on the same day, which is weird. He was on a road trip with his dad out to Pennsylvania, and he was pulled over twice for tailgating. So I don't know. It seems like he was in a real rush to get out of the West Coast. Um, they had some footage. And like it's hard because he's accused of a heinous crime. Uh, and he is innocent until proven guilty, but it's really hard not to look at his face and, and think that his eyes are like kind of creepy. He's got some intense fucking eyes, that guy. Just like bulging and a little dead. That doesn't mean he's guilty. And it, 
I were to just see him without knowing that he was accused of this, would I think that? I don't know. Probably, but I'm being biased by by his accusation. And therein lies the problem of like criminal justice generally. It's hard not to feel biased against someone who's been accused of a crime, you know, even if they haven't been proven guilty. But I don't like the look of that guy's face. Sorry. Sorry. Doesn't mean he's guilty. Just a thing that I feel. Um, when they did finally arrest him at his parents' home in Pennsylvania, they did search his car and they took samples of his DNA. So I'm sure the cops are working with whatever they found during that search to confirm their suspicions. And it's information that we do not have access to. So we can't make we can't make a determination as to his guilt or innocence. Guilt or innocence. Okay. Being pulled over twice in one day is a skill. Ooh, DNA match, match was mentioned. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Uh, let's see. Let's Google it. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, I missed this. Idaho murder suspect Brian Koberger was caught via genetic DNA testing. Let me pull this up so y'all can see in real time. Let's look. Okay, what is this? Oh, God, what did I do? Go back. Okay, sorry, I don't usually use Yahoo News for my... Oh my gosh, for fuck's sake, Yahoo, get your shit together. Every other website can handle this. Okay. Um, was arrested with the help of genealogical DNA testing, according to reports. 28-year-old Washington University, blah, blah, blah. Moscow police said that more information about the circumstances leading up to the arrest would be released once he appears in court. It has since been revealed that the breakthrough in a case that was unsolved for over a month came after a process called genetic genealogy, which led investors to Mr. Koberger. So sources of knowledge of the investigation told CNN that the unidentified DNA evidence was run through a public database to find potential family member matches. The DNA testing was followed by subsequent investigative work by detectives to arrest Koberger as it's okay. Subsequent investigative work. That's stuff that we don't know what happened. Just that's, that's journalists speak for, we don't know what happened. Subsequent investigative work. Okay. It is interesting though, because genetic genealogy has helped solve a lot of cold cases. Most famously, the Golden State Killer. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah. Okay. Good to know. That's, that's how they made the first connection. So I assume they collected DNA evidence to confirm... Yeah, I mean the databases are fueling law enforcement when you when you do that, those databases are working with law enforcement and I'm sure somewhere in their privacy policies or whatever you sign when you agree to give them your DNA, you're you're signing off on that. Yeah, I, I think in a lot of cases they um corporations or organizations or entities have to comply with police requests if the police have probable cause to search. Yeah, Yahoo News still looks like 1997. The, the glory days of the internet. All right, so that's the update there. Uh, let's see. Moving on. In other news, Amazon. Amazon's going to lay off 18,000 people. And sales, Salesforce is going to lay off 10% of its workforce. And I guess this is what the feds wanted. They, they were saying, like, we need more layoffs to stave off inflation. So it's working. <laughs> I don't know. Um, for you, for those of you who work real jobs, how's it going out there? How you feeling? Are you quiet quitting? I feel like I've been coming into contact with more and more people who are quiet quitting. 
Like I can, I can tell they're quiet quitting and I'm the one getting like services or whatever from them. And I can't hate, like, I can't judge and I can't hate. I get it. I've quiet quit before. I get it. You reach a point of no return and you can't really, you can't really do much more. So you quiet quit because you're so exhausted and burnt out. I just feel like I've noticed it more like, oh, you're quiet quitting. That's why you're acting like this. All right. That's fine. Mm, that's a good idea. Make a video on using genealogy sites. That's a good one. And it's very, uh, you know, of the time now with this happening, I'll add it to the list. Okay, it's on the list. Thanks for your input. Thanks for the suggestion. All right, where are the back back to my notes. Where are we at? January 5th. Uh, let's see. Ooh, people are going on strike in the UK. Until companies treat people like people, it ain't going to stop. True. Ooh, fellow teachers quiet quitting. I can't even imagine being a teacher, especially through the pandemic. I would be not a teacher anymore. <laughs> uh, leave of absence. Yes. Yes. Love it. Dissociating. Great. Loud quit. Loud quit, baby. Or... Maybe you'll get laid off and then you'll get a sweet, sweet severance package. That's the, that's the dream, ain't it? Then you can collect unemployment for a while. Quiet quitter since 96. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, sounds kind of bleak out there. Sounds a little bleak. Yeah. Ready to retire since 18. We were not meant to labor. We were meant to eat snacks and lay in the fields. Lay on a beach somewhere. I feel you. Oh, another uh, tech news, I guess. Meta, Facebook. I love how Facebook's given itself this new nickname, Meta. It's like when your high school friend tries tries to like reinvest, invent himself when he goes to college and changes his name to something cooler. We all know your Facebook. Meta, whatever. Anyway, Meta has been fined four hundred and fourteen million dollars by the EU because it was it forced users on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp to work to fork over user data without their consent. That's why you see those like little cookies notifications that pop up everywhere. It's called the GDPR. It's a Euro European law that requires websites operating in the EU, which is all of them because that's how the internet works. They have to request consent before collecting cookies. Cookies is how websites collect user data. That's why you keep seeing cookies notifications popping up on every single website that you go on. Facebook, Instagram, what's up? They weren't doing that. They weren't giving users the options to opt out or to at least know what data was being used. Um, and so now it has to fully override uh, how it sets up its ads, which could damage five to 7% of their ad revenue. And if you didn't know this, Meta already is like really tanking. Um, on the ad front, because the reason why they were able to make so much money to begin with is because they were violating regulations left and right, or like full out civil rights laws. Like they were, for the longest time, they would, would allow people to um, filter what advertisements were shown to people based on race. And those advertisements include housing advertisements, which is very illegal. You cannot discriminate who you advertise housing to. Uh, uh, but Facebook was doing it because weren't they the, were they the ones that coined the phrase like 
move fast and break things. Was that Facebook or is that somewhere else? That's the general ideology in Silicon Valley, though. Just get get it out there. Get it out. And if you break things, fine. Um, so anyway, so their ad revenue has really tanked. And anyone who's ever placed an, a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad knows this. Their return on investment has tanked because, like, Facebook has had to actually start complying with regulations. The only reason why they were working so well is because Facebook could, like, kind of skirt around things. Because, again, the law takes a long time to catch up with developments. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they have to actually start asking now. In other news, a little bit bleak. Hold on, hold on. We are in which corner? Climate corner, climate corner. It's not good news. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Some countries in Europe, hi to my viewers in Europe. Good afternoon. They are experiencing the hottest temperatures ever on record for January, causing some ski resorts to close in the Alps and causing meteorologists to sound the alarm and causing me to feel less confident in my choice to want to move to Portugal sometime in the future, okay? Makes me a little bit less comfortable with that decision. All right, okay, but also I check the weather in Lisbon every day. I look at Lisbon weather and then I look at Minneapolis weather just to, I don't know, make myself feel bad. And it's just always been in like the 50s and 60s and like really consistent, which seems pretty normal for Lisbon based on the research I've done because I can't stop thinking about not living in this fucking country anymore. Uh, okay, it's cold in the UK. It's 50s in New York. It's bad everywhere. It's bad everywhere. Live where you want to live. It's bad everywhere. Did everyone order their composting items? We talked about this on Monday. Climate Corner was good news on Monday. It was good news on Monday. We talked about how composting can actually help and make a difference. Something that you can do in your own home. Okay, but Spain is also, Spain's the, really hot. Really hot. Oh, it's pouring in Southern California. That's good. We got a foot and a half of snow in Minnesota yesterday. Hated that for me. Had to, had to, had to do a lot of shoveling. A lot of shoveling. And it was heavy because it was like 31 degrees. So it was like wet, heavy snow. Hated it. Hated it. Yeah. So it's a little spooky out there. Per usual, I suppose. Okay. In other news, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In other news, I have never seen this, but apparently in the 1968 film adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, which is apparently a favorite of English teachers to show in high school, mine did not. Mine did not. Not that I recall, at least. It starred a 16-year-old Olivia Hussey and a 17-year-old Leonard Whiting Hussey. I love that last name. What a great last name. Okay. The, this film apparently featured a nude bedroom scene which is shockingly scandalous for 1968. I mean, like, inappropriate things with children, I guess, is, was a lot no more normal then. Not that it was okay, but it was like, I don't know, people were less skeezed out by it. I don't know. Anyway, the two actors, who are now 71 and 72 years old, are now suing Paramount Pictures for sexual abuse, asking for $500,000 or more for this film and for that nude scene specifically. Um, at the time of the release in 1968, Roger Ebert described that, that there was a lot of fuss, including witness the scene at the London premiere. Everyone be scandalized. The Queen saw it. Also, my internet, it looks like it's kind of coming in and out. So I apologize if I'm getting, if I'm getting lower quality. Okay. 
So more than 50 years later, the two actors are suing, claiming that the bedroom scene was deceptively filmed when they were underage and that they had been assured that no nudity would be included in the final product. The lawsuit was filed on Friday in Los Angeles Superior Court and lays much of the blame for the deception on at the feet of Mr. Zifarelli, who died in 2019. But it asserts that Paramount Pictures knew or should have known images of plaintiff's nude bodies were secretly and unlawfully obtained during the performance. The company is repackaging what is essentially pornography, the complaint said. You'd think they would have said repackaging what is essentially CP. That would have been a more powerful thing to have said, but maybe they say that. I didn't look at I didn't look at the actual filing. According to the lawsuit, Mr. Zifforelli told the actors that no nudity would be filmed and that they would be wearing flesh-colored undergarments during the bedroom scene. But on the morning of the shot, he told them that they must act in the nude or the picture would fail. You must act in the nude or the picture will fail. The director showed them where the cameras would be set so that no nudity would be filmed or photographed for use in Romeo and Juliet or anywhere else, the lawsuit says. The actors sued just before the end of a three-year window in California that temporarily lifted the statute of limitations so people who said they were sexually abused as children could file civil cases. In recent days, the state has been seen a flood of litigation under the statute called the California Child Victims Act before the window expired on Saturday. The lawsuit alleges sexual harassment and childhood sexual abuse, among other claims. And a number of states have done this. They've reopened the window to file sexual assault lawsuits um for people who are underage um i think in part because a lot of them have recently extended the statute of limitations now like so it's it's extended say from like five years to 20 years so they to be more fair for the people who were abused 50 years ago when the statute of limitations was really short they opened a window of time for even older cases to come forward just to make it more equal for people to give people the opportunity who didn't before before the statute of limitations is extended does that make sense uh in her 2018 memoir the girl on the balcony miss hussey recalls the filming of the scene writing that after a makeup artist approached her to apply full body makeup she confronted mr ziffarelli following a small panic attack and he assured her that she would be wearing a nightgown in the scene. Although, should things, you know, flow in another direction, I want you to be ready, Miss Hussey recalled the director saying. Don't like that. And she said that there was one incident in which a dirty old man on the crew had to be removed. That's nice. In interviews from around the time of the memoir's publication, Miss Hussey had expressed some approval of how the scene was filmed, telling Variety that it was tastefully shot, and she told Fox News that it wasn't that big of a deal and that the film's production crew had become a big family. John C. Manley, a lawyer who has long represented plaintiffs alleging sexual abuse, said that Miss Hussey's statements as an adult would likely make the case more difficult for her to win. Which I agree. Mr. Marinozzi... Uh, which I think is her lawyer, said that Miss Hussey's interviews about the scene showed her trying to come to grips with the situation and express her pride for the film and her performance, although he said she was never proud of that scene. They did that what they were directed to do because they were professionals, he said. And I could see that both ways, um, but I can't really see a jury necessarily hearing her saying four years ago it wasn't that big of a deal and now bringing this lawsuit and then f finding that to be a, a positive thing you know it doesn't look good seems to be the the theme the theme yeah i think yikes i think that's gonna be a major yikes <sighs> I don't know what the male actor has said publicly. Frankly, I did not dig too deep into it. So it might be that the male actor has a stronger case. Who's to say? Yes. Thora Birch was only 16 or 17 in American Beauty, which makes that movie double hard to revisit with all the spacey. I used to love that movie. I can't watch it now. I can't watch it now. Ay, ay, ay. Did someone, okay, just because they could consent doesn't make it okay. Yeah, did someone argue age of consent? I fucking hate that argument. I hate that argument. I don't give a shit what the age of consent is. It's creepy, period. Done. And I know that's not the legal argument, but for me as a person, 
17, nope. That's a no for me, dog. That's a no for me. Seems like a really low amount. I agree. I agree. No, Robin, I graduated in 2010 and we were shown the Leonardo DiCaprio one as well. <sighs> yeah, she was clearly trying to rationalize trauma. I think that's a, a valid argument that she could make at trial. I am a little leery about how just a regular juror would take that, though. Hmm. Anyway, that's that. That's that. And in good news, in good news, hold on. I think I have a banner for this. The abortion portion. Hello. Hello. Okay. In good news, the FDA changed a rule that, and it now allows pharmacies to dispense first trimester abortion pills. So it used to be just clinics that could dispense those pills. Now pharmacies can do it as well. And Walgreens and CVS are stepping up to get, they have to like register to qualify for it. They're not just handing them out like candy though. It's not like the morning after pill where you can just walk in and ask for it. You do have to get a prescription for it from a doctor. And CVS and Walgreens does have to comply with state laws, many of which outlaw the sale of abortion pills. So it does increase access as a whole, but not in the states where access is desperately needed. So it's good news, but the tempered good news, tempered good news, but I'll take it. So that's nice. <sighs> More access to pills. Let's see here. And then the other, the only other thing I had for you, I guess we'll put this in consumption corner. I saw a headline that said stomp, stomp the musical or whatever. I don't even know if you call it a musical. The musical act is closing after like three decades as a staple in Manhattan. I never saw the show, but we did watch the movie stomp in choir class. Anytime there was a substitute and I fucking loved it. I love that shit. I've always been such a nerd for like musical movie. Like, okay. When I was a kid, I went to daycare and at daycare, once you outgrew having to take an afternoon nap, you became a big kid. You got to start choosing the afternoon movie that you got to watch because it was quiet time while the little ones napped. We had quiet movie time in the afternoon which was fucking brilliant on the part of my daycare lady. I bet she got at least an hour of, of solace during that time. Good for you, Heidi. Anyway, uh, so we got to watch a movie and we got, we had to, we went like round robin for which kid got to pick the movies. And I was not the cool kid. I was the chubby nerd that a lot of people teased. It's all right. I'm going to therapy for it. It's fine. And uh, my movies of choice <laughs> were always um, The Princess Bride. Which in hindsight, not appropriate for like a six-year-old, but there was only kissing in it. So it's probably fine. Um, and a lot of it went over my head anyway. Princess Bride or Fantasia. Loved Fantasia. Every version of every version of Fantasia. I loved all the cartoons, how it matched up perfectly, how it like drew a picture of, if you're not, if you're not aware, Fantasia is a Disney movie or like series, I guess, where they would create music videos for classical music. And uh, they were like, they were cartoons. So there was one where it was like Mickey Mouse is in a cave and like sweeping with a broom and then the brooms start multiplying. Like there was all sorts of really fun cartoons and I fucking loved that shit and everyone hated when it was my day to pick the afternoon movie because I always pick Fantasia or Princess Bride which was a cool choice and those kids were lame for not liking Princess Bride so oh the hippopotamus ballerina yes so good it's so good 
I loved Grease too. Not when I was a little kid, but when I was like 11, 12, I loved Grease. I rewatched it recently. Pretty, pretty problematic. Pretty problematic. Not Brown Robin. Round Robin. Round Robin. See, so yeah, and what's weird is I'm also, well, I had a, my musical theater phase in high school, but now I'm not like a musical watcher typically, but man, oh man, so good. Stomp, RIP stomp, I guess. Hope they have, hope they're okay. <laughs> oh, boo, I guess it finally got stomped. Boo. That's good. Oh, I, you know what? I have seen Legally Blonde the musical and it was fun. You're right. You're right. <sighs> I haven't seen the Matilda musical, but I do... I did love Matilda the movie as a kid and I rewatched it recently and it holds up. It holds up. It's fun. Just Michael. Thanks for making it to the live. Yeah, I am wrapping up. I'm so sorry. So sorry. I liked hairspray a lot when I was in high school during my musical theater phase. Um, there's one, there's a song that's like a, a trio with the three sisters that I sang with a couple friends in high school in like eighth or no ninth or 10th grade for something. I don't remember what. And one of those friends got married this summer and she had karaoke as part of her wedding. Um, and she really wanted to sing that song. And I was like, all right, anything for the bride. So the three of us got up and I remembered every single fucking word like it was yesterday. So still got a lot of hairspray in my brain, apparently. Yes, Mom, I'm a big girl now. That's one. That's the one. Mama, I'm a big girl now. Ba -da -ba. Yeah, I remember every word. So there is still a little theater, theater, musical theater nerd inside, inside me. Uh, have I covered Scamilton? Is that the like unofficial? No, I'm thinking of something else. I have not covered Scamilton. I'm thinking of the unofficial Bridgerton musical, which I did, I did cover that. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Listen, we got to get to work. It's 9.07 a.m. Okay. I'm out of things to talk about. Uh, if you didn't catch it, yesterday I dropped a video all about, over on the main channel, all about Thin is in. Is Thin back in? We discuss. TLDR, I think yes. But I share a lot of personal stories in that one. I think I got probably more personal in that one than I've gotten in maybe any other... Maybe any other, uh, uh, you know, video. That's the word. Hello. Hello. Um, great. That's all I have for you. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, I will be back on Monday. Let me check my calendar and make sure so I'm not lying to you. Yes, I will be back Monday, the 9th. At 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Don't you forget it. Don't you forget it. If you've been watching and you're not subscribed yet here, why not? Do it. Go ahead and do it. Give this video a thumbs up, please, and thanks. And I will see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. <laughs>